I tell you what, fuck this shit, I'm really cold. I want to make a survival fire. Which, which end, which end do I like? If you think about it, the idea of heating your house with wood is a proposition that really couldn't be any simpler. Uh, you know, you throw a log in there, you throw a fucking match at it, and poof, your house is hot, you know. Um, that's kind of true. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that. Yeah, you know, kindling's a good idea. Um, but um, it, it is a very simple idea. But uh, there's a lot that you can learn about uh, how to, you know, use your wood stove or use your fireplace where you can get a lot more heat out of the same amount of wood. Um, and that just it saves you money, it saves, you know, uh, you know pollution out into the air, um, and it just makes your life easier, because lugging firewood kind of sucks. Um, this is where I keep all my firewood for the house, and this is the only way that I really heat my house. Um, I have an electric heater that's in the basement that I had to install in order to get house insurance. I wasn't able to get house insurance unless I had some sort of official method of heating it so I guess you know when the shit hits the fan and you know there's a blackout or something I've got that backup heating source of my electric heater that I can't use but somehow it's the insurance companies that made them feel more comfortable so my pipes wouldn't freeze but in reality the only uh, heat source I've got is this um, uh, the, the house has a basement so there's always uh, sort of uh, 50 degree air coming up from the basement uh, it's wonderful just sort of passive geothermal coming up from there. And when I say passive geothermal, I don't mean I have tubes under the ground and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean that just, you have a basement and basements are cool uh, in the summer, but they tend to be warmer in the winter because of the underground sort of thermal mass down there. So really the basement is what's keeping my pipes from ever freezing. But you know, I got that electric heater, you know, just to make the insurance companies happy. But in order to make my house comfortable, because 50 degrees is like, you know, not super awesome comfortable. I've got the wood, and that's what does all the work. What I hold in here is about two cords of wood, uh, and I don't even need that for the year. Uh, I, I heat the house off about a cord to a cord and a half of wood per year, depending on how cold it is and everything. Um, and that's, if you're familiar with uh, heating a house with wood, that's pretty good. Uh, the house is pretty well insulated. It's got three inches of urethane foam on the walls, four inches on the ceiling. That's decent insulation. I wouldn't say it's super insulated or anything like that. Um, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm being as efficient as I can with the wood that I am burning. And, that, and that's great because it saves me money. It only cost me about 300 bucks to heat and cool the house for the whole year. Uh, and it saves uh, me time because I don't have to carry this as much wood back and forth. Uh, if I had, if I needed four or five or six cords of wood, that's a lot more wood to buy, a lot more wood to carry and stack, a lot more wood to lug into the house. Uh, it's just better in that respect, and it's better for you know having clean air ar around your house because. Uh, even though wood is a renewable resource, um, you know, it does create smoke, and the less of that, you know, really the better. Uh, so I've picked up a few techniques about how to do a better job with heating with wood so I can get more heat from less wood, and I thought I'd share some of that with you today. All right, so this is sort of a how-to video. It's an instructional video, and a lot of times at the beginning, you know, in the beginning of an instructional video, someone will say, well, the first step of the process is... Uh, and we're not going to do that today because um, when you're heating your house with wood, it isn't a linear process where you begin in one place and then you go through the process and then you end somewhere. Those two ends connect um, if you're doing it properly. Uh, and it's a continuous loop of activity um, as, you're, as you're doing this, where the end of one uh, bit of it feeds into the beginning of the other, uh, the other bit. You can see here there's a big pile of wood here, and that's... For convenience, it's right there. Uh, it stacks safely, so it's not going to fall into the fireplace and burst into flames. Um, but it's also here, so uh, it can be drying off. This was sitting here during yesterday's fire, so all this wood, whatever moisture it still had in it while it was outside in my drying racks, and that is important to have really good drying racks for your firewood outside. A lot of people just throw a tarp over it or whatever, but the more moisture you can get out of your firewood, the better, because uh, when it's burning, it's not using its heat energy to drive moisture out of itself. Just it's releasing all that heat into your house. Uh, it's also better for keeping your, your chimney cleaner. Uh, but what we're focusing on today is getting the most heat as you can out of there and getting your wood extra dry right before it goes in uh, is a good way of doing that. So I always keep this pile here uh, nice and full uh, when this is burning so that this stuff is drying so it's ready to go in there and be nice and dry and, uh, and put all of its heat into the house. 
Uh, the first thing we do in the morning uh, is open up the bottom tray of the wood stove. And if you can see what's in here, this, this removes, uh, there is uh, a lot of this, this white powder. And there's not really any heat value in that white powder. That's completely burned down. There's nothing else that that's going to do. Although it does have value for other things around the house. In the garden, it's really good. So we're going to save this stuff and use it as a soil amendment. And also, though we're not going to talk about it today, you can use it for making soap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that today at all. Uh, the other bit that you're going to see in here is little bits of black uh, in here. And these do still have some heat value. I know they're little, but if you imagine one of these being a red-hot ember, and somebody placed that red-hot ember in your hand, and you close your hand around it, you would definitely feel how much heat potential is still in these. Now, I, I could take these and I could put them back into the fire there uh, so that we could burn them again, but that would just be a huge pain in the ass for these, these little things. So these just go out into the garden too. And even the, and these little pieces of black, black stuff here, they have value for the garden, so they're not going to total waste. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring it out to the greenhouse and dump it into uh, a repository where I, I keep all this stuff before it goes out to the garden. So now that this is all cleaned out, I can insert it back into the wood stove like that, and I don't close the, the bottom door fully, and the reason for that is that extra air can go in there, and that'll help feed the fire when it first begins. Now, you don't want to leave that open because the fire would overheat and burn your house down or something like that, something terrible. Um, but at the beginning, I leave this, this door, door open. I also open up all the other valves. This one on the left-hand side op uh, operates uh, a kind of a damper in the back, which drives the... Uh, the smoke through the catalytic combustor, which I have removed because it just, they never work. They, don't, they, they never seem to work. Give, leave me some angry comments below if you're a big catalytic combustor guy um, but, uh, or gal. But uh, yeah, I've just never had much luck with them. Um, so I just, I, I have it removed. Um, and I still do awesome with the uh, amount of BTUs I get out of the wood. So, uh, you know, it seems like it's still going all right, so yeah. Crucify me in the comments politely. Uh, I also open up the uh, the air intake in the back, and I use an outside air uh, vent that uh, goes behind the wood stove, up behind it, out to the walls out there, uh, and I dry in outside air. That's a, that's a pretty important thing too, because uh, fire needs air, and as much. Uh, air is going and smoke is going up the smokestack uh, up the chimney, that has to be replaced from somewhere. Um, if you don't have an outside air adapter, it's drawing that air out of every crack and crevice around your doors and around your windows. So even though you may be heating your house, you're drawing all this cold air in from outside that's crawling across your floors to help feed this thing. So if you can uh, feed it directly from a vent in the back, it's a huge, huge benefit to keeping your house warm because you're not sucking all this air, uh, this cold air in from outside. Uh, so once we've got the, the bottom drawer in there, I'm going to open this up. I've got a little lamp in there just to make it a little easier to see what's going on in here. So uh, what we can see in here is we've got more of more of that white stuff, just this white, this white powder, a lot of that. And like I said, it has no heat energy left in it. So that's, that stuff's all done. And I've got quite a bit of, of these black things, you know, the, the the old embers. Here's a, here's a big one here I saved from the other day so I could show you. Yeah, it's just burnt wood. Um, now that has got a lot of heat value. And if you get this thing red hot, you get the, you know, get a match on that, get that all red hot, blow on it a little bit, try to hold that in your hand. I mean, you, you just completely destroy your hand. There's an enormous amount of heat value left in this thing, even though it's just a tiny little thing that's the size of a prune or whatever. So we're going to save these. And, uh, and try to keep them there as best we can. I use this little piece of wood for kind of raking around. There's, there's slots on the bottom. And I'm going to rake things around, try to get as much of the white um, sort of uh, powdery stuff down through the grates into that bottom tray and, and leave as much of the black, uh, uh, you know, embers and things left in there. So I'm going to give this a run like that. And you can see some of the black pieces are falling down through the grates, but the, the point here is to just keep as many as you can up there. And even if some have fallen down uh, through to the bottom, it's not going to be a big deal because um, the, the heat's still going to go down into the tray. It'll still burn that stuff. So uh, the next step for today, this isn't usually a, the next step, is just to remove the, the lantern because it's about to get hot in there. don't usually do it with a lantern. It's thought it would be helpful for visualizing what's in there. Uh, and what we're going to do next is put a large something in the back. I like to have something kind of large and structural. Here's 
don't know what kind of wood that is, something I chopped down over the summer. Uh, I'm going to put this in the back, and the reason for that is because uh, you want some, something to kind of hold up all the other sticks and everything, because if everything just is collapsed on top of each other, you can't, the air can't get at it, and air getting at your fire is really critical. So you want to make sure you have something that kind of everything else can kind of lean on. So I start with something big in the back, and then I'll usually put in some paper. And what I love using for paper is old tax documents. You're, you're supposed to keep like seven years of tax records. Uh, so every year you've got like, you know, one year, one seven-year-old pack of old tax invoices and things like that that it's time to get rid of. And what a great way, you know, forget shredding them, burning them gets rid of them completely. And you get the use um, as a fuel source. So I like using tax documents. When I run out of these, newspaper works out excellent. Newspaper's really my favorite. That stuff goes up like, like napalm. Um, or it burns like paper, anyway. So I put a little bit of that in there. Sometimes, as a little extra treat, I like to add some bark. Now, this is white birch bark. Um, this happens to burn very well. A lot of bark that actually is not very good for your fire. Um, you know, don't, don't avoid putting it in. It's not a big thing. You know, just it smokes, doesn't burn really well. But this stuff has like a natural wax in it. Uh, you can light one into this and it'll burn like a candle. So I'll sometimes put a little bit of that in. Uh, and uh, today I, I want this fire to start to like impress you. So I, want, I really want to make sure this one burns well. So I put that in there. Um, and then I like to just have like some old scrap wood. You can use little twigs like for kindling. This is just some old scrap from the house construction. I'm still going through old scrap wood because I kept all of it. So I'll break this up into little pieces. Here and you want to get them nice and spread out so that the air can get at them. Just kind of crisscrossing. Whenever they, whenever they lay right up against each other like that, that air in the middle is not getting air. So you want to crisscross or do something uh, where you know the air can get at them. Round twigs, round dried twigs, like naturally from a tree, is really kind of the best. But I've got a lot of this scrap, so I'm still using this stuff up. Let's see if I can get one more break out of it. You know. All right, so got a little pile right there, uh, and then I'm just going to take some of this stuff. This is just wood that I cleared up around my house as I'm clearing things out for more solar panels and everything. Chopped all this myself. I have a video about one of the trees that I felled last year. You might want to see it. What's it called? Large tree felling goes horribly well or something like that. I was really surprised. It was a giant tree for, for me. I always kind of check them for bugs to make sure the bugs don't go into the fire. You know, I know. Make fun of me. Getting burned alive, I think, would be a horrible way to go, though. So I wouldn't want to do that even to an insect. Okay, so it's pretty full at this point. We're going to put a little bit more in the back afterwards, but for right now, I'm going to get it lit. Um, remember, I've got this bottom hatch open. All the other valves are all open. I've got some matches tucked right up here. And a little striking pad. So we're going to light it, and I am going to light right here on the paper and right here on that bark. Ooh, my match went out. Well, it doesn't matter. It's, it's my hand. Anyway. Okay. Kind of as soon as possible, you want to get this closed, just so it can start drawing the air from from the outside, and and that's it. We're gonna let this this run for a while. I'll put a little more, more wood in on the top once this gets kind of established. Again, you don't want to squish everything down right away, but once the wood in here seems like it's burning, I'll put a little bit more wood on the top. And don't forget to close your bottom tray. That's great. That it's giving all this extra air in there. Um, uh, at the moment, but it will totally overheat your wood stove if you leave something like that up and open. Um, and what we're do the, the great thing about this is that we made sure we captured all of those old black embers, so all that extra heat energy uh, is all going to go into our fire instead of just getting dumped outside. I see a lot of my neighbors that their ember piles where they dump their ash outside it has so so much you know chunk so many chunks of black uh, wood in there that they they could have burned, um, but instead it just goes out and it just rots outside. It's good for the soil outside, but I'm greedy and I want to keep, keep the heat energy in the house. So I hope some of that was helpful for you. Heating your house with wood is an excellent way of doing it. I mean, a lot of people think of it as kind of a, a backup emergency uh, approach to it. And, and there is a little bit of a chore to it. You know, each morning you wake up and, you know, it might be a little chilly in the house. And to some degree, the last thing you feel like doing some mornings is building a fire. You know, it would be really nice to just turn a switch or hit a button or something like that. 
Um, but there's just so much reliability to it. Nothing here really can break. It's all, there's not really any moving parts. I know there's valves and things like that, but it's not like it's not like a heating system with it, like a, a squirrel cage blower that can have the bearings uh, blow out or electronics that can go or something like that. You know, you put things in there, they burn, they keep your house warm. And I, I, I used to live in a, uh, a, a trailer, a camper trailer for a while while I was saving up to, to um, you know, build my house and everything. Um, it, was, it was kind of by choice. I, I, I spent the summer camping at a, a campground and I just thought it was awesome. Instead of having an apartment as my first place, I decided to buy a trailer and live in a campground. And it was awesome in the summers, and the winters were pretty pretty rough. But it was really uh, helpful to me because I learned about um, the value of something like this. Because my heater was always breaking in the trailer, um, you know, just because you know moving parts, mechanical things break. And it was uh, it really um, showed me the value of of just having something that's so simple that really can't break. You put stuff in there, you burn it, and you can keep your house warm and comfortable no matter what the circumstance whether there's electricity coming in or anything that's something about like wood pellet stoves I, I just think that's nuts people would say I have a wood pellet stove as my backup heating system like if the power ever goes out but almost all of those pellet stoves and you can start to really hear the, the rush go through there now uh, almost all those pellet stoves use electricity to, to operate properly so I just love this uh, because I put wood in it burns keeps me warm keeps the family warm um, and no matter what, we can always warm the house. It, even if I ran out of firewood, you know, we could go out and we could fell a tree in the middle of the winter if we absolutely had to, and it would keep us uh, alive. I love this thing. I'm rambling. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ooh! Ah. Don't forget to close that vent. Whew! That was close. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.